system from the start button we added. So we'll start the system, the gantry homed. Okay, so let's come back up here, make sure that everything is working accordingly. You see the wood coming in to the saw. The wood is coming into the saw. It is actually coming and cutting right now. That's going to go to the next point, which is the, and the crates did run in at that point in time. At this point, the wood come up, should come up to the chopper. It should stop because the blade is down. The blade is currently down, then it comes up as soon as the photo eye is made. It cuts the wood based upon the length. The gantry then will come in and pick up the pieces of wood and then independently put one in the left crate and the right crate. So you can see that a little bit better. You can see that the way that's working a little bit better if I were to back this up just a little bit and maybe get it to this point right here where you can see the pick or the place of that. What I'm trying to do is just show you that how the system is currently working. So now it comes up, picks the actual wood up, goes to the place, place position, drops them down, and then goes to the left side, goes to the right side, drops it, turns off the vacuum, and then the process repeats. All right, so this is gonna be Easy PLC's machine simulator, and it's gonna be running a gantry system, which is gonna be a cutter, which the cutter is gonna cut the wood in half, and then it's gonna chop the wood again. Then the gantry is gonna pick it up. It's a three axis gantry. It's gonna pick the wood up and put the wood in each crate. There's gonna be two crates. Then it will come in and put it in. Now let's actually go in and watch this scenario run. You can see that it cuts it right here on the saw comes over here and there's another place right here where there's a chopper it basically as soon as the photo eye senses it it will chop and it's based upon the encoder count so there is an encoder involved in this and then it comes down to the gantry which does a pick and place basically three axes and then it comes in at that point in time it finishes out and runs the crates out then it repeats that process now again that's the section of the wood and that's how that works based upon this so we're going to actually run this and i'm going to show you how this stuff works now again what so to give you a quick viewpoint i'm running this currently off of a studio 5000 version 31 and i'm currently running emulate 5000 in slot 7. so in slot uh, basically in my plc program in slot 7 is where i have my processor and everything is emulated. I don't have a single process, a, a real world processor involved in this. So uh, with that said, let's talk about the code just a little bit because I have two uh, sections of code for which I'm doing this in. I have two state machines, two finite state machines. Basically, really simply, a finite state machine is a set number of activities for a machine to work. And it's only gonna do, uh, in a certain uh, state, it's only gonna do certain functions. So with all that said, you know, we have a start start button or start push button station, start stop, and in the start stop push button station, what it's going to do is it's going to cut on the light. I'm using the light as my active, the system active bit. So what I'm saying is if it's in state zero and the system is active for two and a half seconds, then it's going to go ahead and preload um, the, the encoder count preset which is 2 which is going to get the length of the actual uh, wood when it's chopped it's going to determine the length but after two and a half seconds of that it's going to go into state 1 in state 1 it's going to turn the saw on and it's, if the saw is running for an, a second and a half what it's going to do is going to turn the conveyor on this is going to look at the encoder counts so if both of the encoder it's basically uh, a leading, uh, you, you use the A and B channel to determine the leading edge. All I'm doing here is saying when A and B are on, that the system is running. So it's currently, there's activity on the encoder or these activity on the conveyor running. So let's go ahead and move it in state two. Now, if the system's not active, I'm going ahead and pushing, always pushing back to state zero. Now in, in the state right here, uh, state two, because we have uh, conveyor activity now, I'm going to make sure that I have the positioner in the up position and my cutter is down. I want the cutter down so I want to be able to stop the wood before it actually starts the cut because what I'm gonna do is if the cutter's down and the, the system's home I'm, uh, or the, the positioners, vertical positioner's up, what I'm gonna do is move into state three and in state three, I'm gonna say before uh, the PE before the chop is gonna open the cutter up or, or raise the cutter if you would then it's going to go into state four 
in state four, what it's going to do is going to look for A and B channel to come on, and it's going to do a, the encoder count. So it's based upon if channel A is on, then it channel as soon as channel B comes on, it's going to count. Now I really don't. Some people may think that I really don't need a ons right here, or a one shot right here. But the simple fact of me running a continuous task, I do need our, our periodic task. I do need an ons. I need because it will multiple. I will count multiple times based upon how the length of the time that it's currently in this state. Um, with that said, this is very very simple logic. This, this is something to get again challenge yourself to you know get a machine running. So with that said, uh, it comes down here, gets the encoder count, it will raise, uh, the cutter will go back down, cut the wood, then it will take the act vertical, axis, vertical axis up at that point in time, allow the product through, allow time is, is a currently a quarter of a second, and then it will repeat the process. The logic down here is determining the encoder count. If you've noticed that any kind of encoder, if you dealt with an encoder in the past, you have an A and B channel. Now the, again, this is on a specific encoder but you have an A and B channel and if the A channel is the leading channel like if A comes in first and then B comes in if you looked at it on an oscilloscope and so if A came in first and B came in second then the, the conveyor is running in the forward direction if B comes in first and A comes in second 90 degrees out again that means that B channel or that means that the conveyor is running in reverse so again these are always 90 degrees out but again this Keep in mind, this is a simulated process. So let me reset this. Uh, but this is a simulated process. So all of this is uh, basically working off of uh, basically a, uh, a graphical interface right here. So it's nothing, or, there's no real components to this. So just keep that in mind. The 90 degrees is, is to determine that. What I'm doing is saying, okay, I'm set this logic up to basically determine the time frame and who is leading and who is lagging to determine the the basically a case example of the direction of you know the conveyor running. All right, so with that said, I'm getting feet per minute. As far as that goes, I'm not really using feet per minute. I just calculated it out. The pick, uh, the gantry pick. What I'm doing here is I'm coming in at state zero if the machine is not active or PE two is not active. Then I'm going to go ahead and home the gantry. Then I'm going to raise the uh, basically the crate stops and as soon as all that happens I'm going to go into state one I'm going to make sure I unlatch the crate run out and run some crates in when the crates run into photo I5 it and they're both crates are there for a second and a quarter it's going to come down here and throw it in state two in state two it's going to unlatch the crates loading so it's going to stop the crates and make sure they're their station and when it goes into a product present then it's going to come over here to state three. Then it's going to uh, take the gantry to the pick position on the upper pick position. And as soon as it's there, it's going to allow it some time to move, which is a second and a half that comes over here. And then what it's going to do is going to go into state four. State four, if it's equal to that, it's going to go at that point. It's going to load, go to the down position, and then have the gantry go to the pick position. It's going to then detect it's going to turn on the vacuum at that point in time it's going to go to the up position the gantry is going to go to the up position and then it's going to go to the load position the gantry and then will move to the loading position where the gantry drops off the can the two pieces of wood and then what it does in state seven right here is it comes in and uh, unhooks everything or uh, turns off the vacuum and then repeats the process so let's actually watch this stuff work real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to load in our drivers. As you see me do many times, we're going to load in a driver. This is called saw. I'm going to load in the driver real quick. I'm going to hit exit. We're going to go over here. Uh, we're going to walk around. So let's make sure we walk around to the start button. And we're going to start the system from the start button we added. So we'll start the system. The gantry homed. Okay, so let's come back up here, make sure that everything is working accordingly. You see the wood coming in to the saw. The wood is coming into the saw. It is actually coming and cutting right now. That's gonna go to the next point, which is the, and the crates did run in at that point in time. At this point, the wood come up should come up to the chopper. 
it should stop because the blade is down the blade is currently down then it comes up as soon as the photo eye is made it cuts the wood based upon the length the gantry then will come in and pick up the pieces of wood and then independently put one in the left crate and the right crate so you can see that a little bit better you can see that the way that's working a little bit better if I were to back this up just a little bit and maybe get it to this point right here where you can see the pick or the place of that. What I'm trying to do is just show you that how the system is currently working. So now it comes up, picks the actual wood up, goes to the place, place position, drops them down, and then goes to the left side, goes to the right side, drops it, turns off the vacuum, and then the process repeats just as the logic does dictate. Let's watch this last one. So the gantry is currently in a state of one, and this goes to a state of three, four. The state machine works very quickly, I will say that. So I just wanted to show you that and give you another case example of, of how that system works, right? So give you another system, a, a good example of Easy PLC's machine simulator, uh, and a, a good challenge, a good way to challenge yourself, again. Um, in the video prior to this, we did show how to add the push button station because not all these, uh, not all the pre-built uh, machines come with push button stations. So I did want to show you how to edit those and show you how efficiently this software works. With that said, I wanted to add some value and just show you another process and show you a helpful tip to, uh, you know, help you stay fluent and stay proficient in your craft again this is something i use daily to challenge myself when i feel like i'm not making progress and i wanted to make sure that i pass this on to you guys and to see if, if you know this can add value to you as well so with all that said we'll see you guys on the next one